He wants to go on with it, but of course if he misses here, Liverpool against all the odds have won the Champions League. Shevchenko, Dunak saves for Liverpool! And against all the odds, the team who are 3-0 down at half-time, Liverpool have won the Champions League. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart. This is amazing, a night they will never forget. Liverpool are champions of Europe. The 2005 Champions League final in Istanbul, well, one man had a particular reason for that to be a night he'd never forget, and his story has now become the subject of a play. It's called Beating Berlusconi, and its premier performance will be tonight. We're joined by Mark Radley, a cobbler, key cutter and Liverpool fan, and by John Graham Davis, a playwright and actor. Good morning to you both. Morning, Edward. Good morning. Mark Radley, let me get this story straight. It was half-time, you were a bit depressed because Liverpool were well down at that stage, and you made your way into the AC Milan VIP box, helped yourself to a bit of food and drink, is that right? Totally by chance and accident, um, yeah. Um, I was, wasn't a little bit dis- disappointed, I was very disappointed, should we say. <laughs> and uh, the champagne that wet- wetted my lips on, on that night certainly helped a little bit, but uh, I was still very distraught. And then you saw an empty seat and thought you'd sit down and watch the next bit of the match. It was certainly more of a comfortable seat. The people around me didn't seem too comfortable um, that I was sat there, but um, there certainly the gentleman next to me um, seemed to make a bit of a joke about it. The gentleman next to you, um, of course, turned out to be none other than Silvio Berlusconi. That's right, yeah. <laughs> did you? Well, you didn't know, did you, who it was? I didn't know, no, I certainly didn't know. I'd say the people around him were sort of trying to stop me from sitting there. He, he wanted to make a bit of a joke about it, and uh, it was only later that I found out who he was. Uh, and what did you talk to each other? How did you interact? Uh, he, he was sort of giving me sort of s- sign signals of the three nil gesture and uh, sort of tapping me on the leg and sort of making a joke of obviously our team being being down and uh, yeah, he was trying to mock me so to speak and uh, as obviously our, our goals went in his attitude changed to say the least. <laughs> did, did he did he sort of take you on poke you a bit as you as Liverpool well, as began to succeed? The first goal goes in. I think he just thinks it's a consolation goal, so he's still smirking. The second goal goes in. Uh, I say the, f- the first goal goes in. I'm jumping up and down and realise exactly where it was because nobody else seemed to be celebrating around around me. The second goal goes in. I thought I'd best hit on me and here for, you know, for safety reasons. Uh, the third goal's going. There's no way. Uh, there's no way I can I can contain myself after, after being three 0 down. And I'm I'm really enjoying the moment. And until I get sort of a bit poking in the in the back shoulder blades and as I turn around that fingers and jive me right in the in the centre of the chest quite uh, quite viciously and this gentleman's face has certainly changed from how it was a few moments earlier. Um, and the, this secured, the, the figure belongs to the future or perhaps he was Italian Prime Minister then indeed. He certainly was and um, yeah he's uh, he's changed a little bit I, I, may, I may add is, is, uh, certainly that facelift hasn't helped hasn't uh, has seemingly done him a few <laughs> favours but uh, certainly take the crease out of his face after seeing the three goals go in anyway you know. <laughs> John Graham Davis um, you chanced on this story I think because Mark Raddy mends your shoes is that right? That's right, yeah, yeah, we knew each other, we used to chat about footy, I'm, I'm just an embittered Huddersfield Town fan, so we, we used to chat about that, and he'd take the mick, and then obviously after the game I called in and congratulated him, and said, obviously you saw it, and he said, well I was there, I said, oh it must have been amazing, and he said, well it was amazing, but this weird thing happened, and he told me the whole story, he hasn't actually told you all of it, because um, the, the, the Turkish security who pulled him away from Berlusconi's guards, who, who, who came to Berlusconi's rescue, and um, pulled their guns, the Turks took him away and they thought he must be a Liverpool VIP because he's in the AC Milan VIP and they put him in the Liverpool VIP (laughs) sat him down with all his boyhood heroes so he watched the extra time of the penalties with them so it becomes even more, so he told me the story and and it went from there. A fantastic night Mark Radley, uh, apart from presumably the, the guns pointing at you yeah, I'm, I'm obviously still lucky to be here, but um, <laughs> I, I, I'm enjoying this moment. It's fantastic. What I mean, John Graham Davis, apart from it being a, a very engaging um, pub story, if you like, what what was it that made you think it could make a play? Well, I, I'm uh, you probably tell I'm not from Liverpool. I came here about six or seven years ago, but I've always been fascinated by the city, and I lived through the 80s and 90s, and it was a very interesting city at that time because it always seemed to me to be a a kind of barometer for social discontent. And I've written a story about a Liverpool fan through his life from the late 70s, growing up, his parents splitting up because of the social problems associated with the 80s, unemployment and so on. Tracing his life as a fan, the ups and downs, and interlaced with that is 
is this story? Is he going to get to the match? Is his wife going to leave him if he goes? Can he raise the money? What happens when he gets there? And then, of course, the Berlusconi climax. <laughs> so, Mark Riley, not only have you um, had this extraordinary um, meeting with an international politician, you've now become a sort of parable for our times. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could say so. And it's, it's How do you feel about that? It's it's just overwhelming. And say to have a play wrote about you. A lot of people can't say that happens. And I'm actually having people coming into my 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 shop, my business, uh, high class, and, and uh, asking for my autograph. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, people seem to be recognising me because it's been all the local press, etc. And now I'm speaking to you guys nationally. So it's uh, it's a bit overwhelming. And I'm going to obviously enjoy the premiere tonight. At, it's an overfeat, and yeah, it's, it's, it's overwhelmed, but fantastic, thank you. Well, I hope the play goes well. Uh, Mark Radley, John Graham Davis, thank you both.